Okay, um, I'm. This will be. Uh, my name is Daniel Guys. Um, I am the creative and technical director at ED Films, and in this stream, uh, we're going to do some background stuff for some for another animated scene for this particular project. So we're moving on from this this scene, this project into a a different scene. So I'm just going to pull that up for you. This is some of the assets we're going to be doing. We're we'll be doing actually a train uh, a train scene and let's just check them all out here. There's this environment here. Let's see. Should pop up in a sec. Mm -hmm. Having a little bit of a meltdown. Change this here. Okay, it's just pulling in right now. I'll show you the actual scene that we're actually going to be doing that is right here. So it's down here. There. So it'll be this scene here, and which is a, a the wide shot with the train. It's a long panning shot. These can be really tricky because there's so many environmental assets to deal with. Uh, so much stuff changes and moves by. And then we, I have to do this scene here. So stuff, stuff in the reflections. And then we have this scene. He looks out the window, and then we have all these kind of little blueprints, and he's rolling across the bridge. So that'll be the... And then he falls through the train, and then he's on a ski hill going down. And then he ends up, and then we cut inside of this little scene here. This, was, this scene here was done really quickly using Element for After Effects. We'll have to make a rig for this character skiing down this tunnel. I have to try to do it pretty quick. We don't have a ton of time for this. And then it comes out to show. This is the Stellarator, which is a different version of a fusion generator. So lots to do for this scene. A couple of big, 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 long shots. Um, so this, actually, let's, before I show you that, we'll just go here. This is this shot here. Um, it really pops in. That, that'll be this one right here. So I've got this painting that I did. These are all of the different assets. A whole bunch of different layers. It's not, you know, it's not the best painting in the world, but once I get once I get it all layered up and it's moving, it's you know, it's pretty it can things can be a little more forgiving. It'll it won't look so bad. Um Throws, uh, the project when is the pro is asking when is the project due in two weeks just under two weeks so pretty soon pretty soon so there's a lot of work to do and it's a lot of this is about trying to move as quickly as possible we have a couple of people helping us too there's uh, David's working on a lot of the character stuff rod movements anything where there's like body rotations or any hand animation and um, yeah, and then we have we have a couple couple other people working on some motion graphics stuff as well. So there's lots to do, but my hope is that we can move pretty quickly. So here are the pieces for this scene right here. I'm running a little bit slow, and I will tell you why because this is a fourteen thousand by well fifteen thousand pixels by almost three thousand. The reason for this is because this is a 4K production. In the end, it'll be 4K. So this has a lot of complexity for us because like 4K is heavy. Things are really heavy. I'm not rendering anything out fi in, in final 4K right now for the first delivery because it won't. Most, most independent theaters don't even have 4K projectors. So this will be screening out South by Southwest. Um, so the festival this year. So they're not screening it at 4K. They're going to be screening it in just regular 2K. So everything gets done down, done to half resolution. Um, so uh, the other thing we have here is the train. We can open that up. So we have the train. This is the train that we're going that I'm going to be rigging up. Um, be, it'll be pretty nominal rigging, but I do want to have like a little bit of movement in the train as it bumps bumps along. And also we want some depth in it. And right now they're just little nested compositions that came in Photoshop as folders, so that has to they have to be rescaled, stuff like that. So the train, this train has to go in both this shot with the placeholder and then the bridge shot. So the bridge shot is here. 
That's not the bridge shot. Where is the bridge shot? There should have been it right there. So this doesn't look very good at the moment. Um, this is pretty normal for an After Effects scene. It looks really bad when you when you start. Um, Thoreau's, I'm not sure if we're going to be at the South by Southwest. Uh, we, we might, but I, I, I think it's like, it's hard to say because we have another project due right after that. So it's kind of hard to say. We're doing a little science, animated science thing on bioaccumulation, which is really fun. So I'll definitely be streaming that once I switch gears into that project more fully. It's a little character driven short. But yeah, if, uh, if you see so you live out there, if you live out there, are, are you, do you live out there at Thoreau's or are you just going for the festival? But yeah, I'll definitely let you know if I'm going to be there for sure. It's always cool to hang out with other animators and people who are making stuff. Um, in the end, this, so the bridge shot is here. This is what the bridge shot has to look like. Normally, I don't have something I'm trying to work to so specifically. Um, but this one, this one, I got it looking a very specific way in Photoshop. So I'm just keeping it as a reference to make sure that I can hit this target right here. But for now... We can, I'm going to start with the train and then I'm going to set up this environment and I'm going to make sure we have the animatic here. So I have the animatic here so that we can get the timing right. Okay, Thoreau's, you live an hour south of Austin. Well, I will definitely let you know if we're going to go because if we go, I we will definitely have a beer for sure. That would be great. You're lucky to live so close to Austin. I hear it's a really cool city. Okay, so this shot is here. Now the shots, these shots, all of them, the director has requested that I, um, I give him a little bit extra to work with, which I usually like to do anyway, because something that often happens in in anim in animation is at least uh, especially with less experienced animation directors or people who aren't familiar with it is this scene in an animatic looks all fine it looks good right it's moving by fine and you're like that's enough but once everything's painted and colored and lit and everything like that sometimes these shots seem too fast and uh, so that's something i have to i i usually allocate room for uh, the only thing I, I need to make still is I do need to make the little houses because I didn't put the little houses in there, but they may not be necessary. So first things first. So I have this giant, enormous composition, which is far too big. Definitely don't need that. So I'm going to take this and we're going to scale it down. The actual resolution of the production, which I believe is 1920 by 1032. Keep the aspect ratio and... Uh, 2064? No, that's not it. 2160. Oh, I can't remember the resolution of this thing. I'm the worst, worst memory for this stuff. Just import a composition here. Um, it's kind of a weird, it's a weird, it's not a weird aspect ratio. It's 185, 185 or something. I can't remember exactly. The word, I have really terrible memory for that stuff. Give me years to memorize the different formats. I'm just going to pull in this one clip really quick. And then we'll know exactly what the resolution should be. 1998 by 1080. Okay. So 1998 by 1080. And then we double it. We went 60. There we go. So that's our 4K resolution. Cool throws. That's awesome. We'll definitely hook up if I'm in town. Grab a beer. Okay, so this is like a snow dusting layer. I didn't name that one. Looks like I didn't name a couple of things, which is sloppy. It's probably because they weren't really finished layers. Yeah, I won't be using these. We'll, these, will, these are like little particle effects that I won't be using anyway. Are you turning those off? Okay. So this will be pretty fun. I think this will be a fun shot. These are all going to be 3D. So the first thing I'll do is make this all 3D. Okay. Just select them all and make them 3D there. Okay, and then set up camera. I always set up the camera early. This one I think will be a pretty wide lens because we want quite a bit of parallax. Probably 65 might be too wide, but 
See, see how it feels. And then I notice this tool in do it here. I think it might be under utility, this, this one under camera. It links the distance of a layer from the camera to the scale, which is pretty cool. So that means if I scale it, it should, it should maintain the size. Maybe it's not super important for this specific one, but maybe it is, I don't know. I'm thinking of trying it out because I've never done it before. So we have cloud, haze, snow, ground. Let's just move this for one second. Okay. So, sorry guys. Um, all right. So what I want to do is I want to put my landforms in. I'm not going to worry so much about the fog and stuff like that. Because that ends up moving anyways. So maybe I, what I'm going to do is just break up my colors of my layers so that they're easier to identify. This project doesn't have a, a too many layers. It's not that bad. Um, there's the haze, haze, haze. Okay, and then we have that's about it for the haze. So we'll just color that red or something. Ground, 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 ground. Okay, make that brown. Ooh, those are awful colors together. It's actually making me feel slightly nauseous looking at that. Not lavender. Why would I pick that? Okay, not that. Okay. And then these ones are kind of extraneous clouds. These are important cloud layers. I don't have enough clouds in this one, but I have a bunch of clouds in the other one that I'll be able to pull over. So clouds I'll make this color. Bar background. I'll make that brown too. And then sky and then color fill. I'm not sure if I need that one or not, but there's actually, this is really not that many layers. I'll probably have to add some stuff to this to give it the depth that we need, but it will be more in, um, it'll be in repeating layers and stuff like that. Okay. So let's get the animatic in here. It wasn't here, but maybe I didn't put it in yet. There it goes. So this shot is eight seconds. I'm going to make this shot 15 seconds just so we have enough room. Actually, well, we'll see. I'll, I'm going to start with 20 because I can always shorten a camera move or lengthen it for that matter. But we'll go here and here. And we'll start from the very edge of the composition. Oh, actually, too, just something I had to do in the thing is this is flipped. So I'm just going to put this back the way it was. I'll, I'm just going to flip the footage after the fact because originally it was animated going from um, going from right to left. So we're going to do that again. But this time I'm just flipping the animation. Okay. So let's just lock that layer. Actually, you know, we need to make this smaller because it's quite intrusive. I don't want to be looking at this. This is more for the same more for timing reference than anything. And actually we've already kind of locked the timing down. So not a lot going on in this shot, which is awesome. It means it'll move faster. I the previous scenes that, that we did with the, it was all based in Russia. Those sections were pretty hard. There was a lot going on, lots of characters, lots of animation, lots of really complicated backgrounds. This one's a little more traditional, which is kind of rad. Okay, so let's move this camera back. We're going to go from this part of the scene here and all the way over. So I tend to like, we have our zero layer, right? Where, where zero is, um, let's just have a look at the position of the camera. The position of the camera is negative 3000. So I'm kind of thinking as should probably actually be further back. It would be nice, but I'm thinking of zero as being where the train track is. So that'll be my zero point. And then everything from that will be either pushed back or pushed forward based on that. So what do we have? We have a color fill. I don't even know if this one is necessary. Does anything happen when I turn it off? I think it does. So we're going to turn that off. I have this sky. Usually I do skies with a lot more layers than this. Um, but I think I'm going to just duplicate it a whole bunch and do other things with it. So with the sky, this guy also has to move quite a bit. So usually I put skies way, 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 way back, like 100,000 or further back. Um, so like, oops, that's only 1,000. 
I'm just going to try this scale thing really quick. See if this works. How does this work? Does this actually work? It kind of does. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so let's put it at 50,000. Because I actually want this sky to move more. It, it's tricky because the idea of this painting is to show there's I mean this is this is really what comes it's one of the difficulties of working in with so much depth is the idea of this shot is to travel from this sort of this sunny landscape to this starting to get into the clouds and the cold the hard thing is is to actually travel that kind of a distance and have the clouds move enough you have to travel at excessively huge speeds so my ho my hope is that I might have to animate these clouds moving manually. We'll see. I'm gonna figure it out as we go. Okay. So I'm wondering too is if we can disable that function easily. Or if I just have to delete the expression off the scale. Oh and we lose all the math. So it's fifteen thousand, okay. 100 I mean okay well at least I can grab grab the number pretty easily and re-implement okay that's cool uh, okay so far background is the distant mountains please don't judge my paintings <laughs> really ugly when all of this stuff is turned off and I can't hide how, how bad the brushwork is I'm just kidding you can judge my paintings all you want Okay, so our camera's definitely going to have to move way more than this. So that is not enough. How much do we move this thing by? Not even that much. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to have to scale this up quite a bit and make the move pretty huge to transition over any background at all. Just to get, we have to we have to create the depth to get the sense of the scale. It's tr like I usually I mean you could do this to with 2D methods and just sort of drag the layers and, and do it that way that might be a way to go but i like being able to use my focus and stuff like that and sort of preserve a little bit of that sense of scale but it creates its own its own other problems so we'll put this back at a hundred thousand one two three three and scale up right. should be a pretty sweet shot though i think it'll be pretty cool and I think what I'll do is I'm going to layer the background clouds and sort of give them a feeling like they're moving. So this also, this camera move should go here and then go over here. I'm probably gonna have to duplicate a whole bunch of pieces for the foreground to actually make this work. To travel over this much landscape, especially far background, I'm gonna have to have a lot of stuff I'm going to try to keep things not too close to the camera so I don't have to, I don't want to repeat too many things, but I'll pull as much as I can from other other layers. Okay, so this one goes next. So I'm just keep, I keep try to keep track of the position of all the layers. This one's at 40,000, go to 35,000. It's really knowing the, the where to place things is... There's not like there's no magic to it. It's a little bit tricky, and it really depends on the camera move. It depends on the the scale of the setup. Like I want that cloud to move more, so it's a pretty dramatic. I sc I usually scrub through pretty fast because you can see the level of parallax that's happening. I might push this guy back a little bit. Cool. Okay, and scale him up a little more. Just make sure that we have the edge covered. There. You can see a bit bigger. The clouds need to be bigger. Okay. So, um, I guess one of the other things I always say is I'm going to try not to be precious of what I made. So I have to be prepared to really make a whole new scene can't get too fixated on on having it look exactly like the image because it's not possible. We're going from a 2D medium to a 3D, essentially a 3D medium with a lot of shifting in time and scale. So 
So this is like I, I say this a lot, but this is my opportunity to repaint this scene and create a bit of a new picture out of it. So okay, so we have another far background layer. And I'm gonna put that just in front of the clouds. So we'll make it thirty thousand. Just for now. back here and oh, I'm just trying to bring this web okay great all right scale this guy up zoom down here and scale do, 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 do. okay cool that one's working all right and that one's at 30,000 so then we have more clouds I usually try to lay this stuff in relatively fast and formulaically um, for the first pass because the next pass is all about refinement. I think this far background layer should be closer. So the far this this one's fifty thousand. This should probably be like. 42,000 for these clouds, which means we'll have to scale them up a little bit more. And then this one should probably be 35, because I feel like it's just moving a lot, especially for far, far background stuff. It's really moving a lot. I mean, I know we're like really accelerating the camera move, but I want it to feel a little bit more together. So if I want it to move less, I just have to push it further back into the background. Maybe even make it a little bit one more. Cool. Great. It's going to be a pretty sweet shot, I think. I think it's going to be pretty neat. I'm excited about it. Excited to see it all come together. And hopefully, it should be pretty fast. We don't have any complicated layers here or systems in place. Cool. Next piece. I say this all the time, too, but it's really hard to paint nicely when you have to think of something as as it's going to be a layered cutout background. It's, I find it really hard to paint. It's actually really hard to find illustrators that can work that way too. It's one of one of the hardest things we deal with when I'm trying to like find someone who can do some concept work or some of the other films I've worked on. Oftentimes I just end up having to do a lot of it myself because it's really hard to take a traditional painting artist or a concept artist and tell them to think of everything as layers and to break their work up into it's very unintuitive you can't sort of you know scrub across the frame you know usually when you're painting you're painting over here and then you're jumping here you're grabbing colors from the sky you're sort of mixing ground colors with sky colors they're all over the place and what i usually find with this kind of stuff is i end up having to work very methodically layer by layer and sort of build the scene from the back to the front. I usually start with the sky and then I kind of start building forward. And the reason I start with the sky, painting the sky and the general color of the air is so that I, I know what colors to incorporate into the ground and into and even tones into the terrain. So I usually like lay my sky gradient, my general color, my color of the sky down and then I start building silhouettes and shapes for the land and then i just go from there but it's it's not as intuitive it's not an intuitive process and i don't think it's hard to find illustrators that can work that way okay so here's a tra the train reference goes in the front so this is like what i thought would be our zero point but it's not going to be a, it's not going to be our zero point it's a lot further back so this i'll put at 10 maybe 15,000 let's put it at 10,000 see how that works now this train has to move through, see actually this might be a good one to apply this little filter, this little thick tool on here, on Duick. Um, and I'm gonna push it back. Cause this one I need to maintain the scale a little bit. So we're gonna put it at 10, well, let's put it at 12,000. Cause this far background layer is at 20,000. And then position down. 
Now, I have no idea how fast this train's going to have to move to keep up with our camera, but probably pretty fast. It's probably going to be like the equivalent of a bullet train. It has to go from just like traveling like 20 kilometers in single shot. Oh my god, yeah, this train is having to go so far. Uh, let's put zero and then we'll put negative 10, three, negative 15, one, two, three, negative 25, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, that train is moving pretty fast. It's like Superman train. Oh man, what are we doing at full resolution? That's another problem. We don't need to be working at full res. Okay. Yeah, that train is so fast. Well, actually, let's just see it in the shot. It probably won't seem that fast when you, in the actual shot. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, cool. That's fine. I might actually take this far back on there and put it a little further back. Put this at 20... Might put this cloud layer at thirty thousand two three. Just to, so we can see a little bit better. Scale it up here so we don't see the edges. I'll reuse these clouds. I, I usually reuse them and stack them all over the place. So we'll use them to create more and more depth in the frame, in the shot. I find for me <laughs> for me, because I'm not really much of a painter, uh clouds and ambience and fog like saves my life. You know. Here's the track, okay. So the track is gotta be in front of the train. I think, mm -mm, as far back around, I wanna move that. So let's put that to 20,000 or 25, one, two, three. So that's gonna have to be scaled up a little bit. Not too much, that's pretty good. Not so bad. Okay. Great. Okay, and there's, there's the track layer whizzing by. Uh, let's say, so this track layer just has to be just in front of the train. So we'll put it at 11, 1, 2, 3, 11,000. Position it down. This isn't the actual track, but it's just kind of what I'm using as my ground reference for the for the train. It's going to be scaled way up. But it's going to move pretty fast, so we'll have to scale it quite a bit. And this is, this is where stuff will start getting dodgy as we start getting more into the foreground pieces. I can't scale up. I'm not going to be able to scale up all my foreground pieces to be able to, to to stretch across the whole frame. Even this thing, we're at half res, so if we look at full res, it's probably already way too big for what it's supposed to be in the actual painting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scale it down a little bit vertically. It's this really fuzzy. Because it's so massive. Like it's having to travel a lot of distance to fit the frame but it's fine it's fine for now um so we're at full that looks okay let's make sure we're not seeing behind the train this train is going to be replaced it's just a placeholder for now i'll probably make the actual train a little bit bigger than this i'm kind of excited about this scene though because I, I love train sets I love trains sets a lot. It's really fun. I'm, kind of, I'm excited to make the little lights on the train and stuff. This train track here, negative 0 0.001, negative 0 0.1. Let's just see. I'm trying to rotate it down a little bit. It seems a little bit angled, funny. Let's go down. It seems like it's getting a little bit. I just want to keep it as flat as possible to keep the animation as simple as possible as possible. Sorry guys, this is kind of a annoying little detail. Five, and then I'll bring it down just a bit. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, good enough for now. Good enough for now. Just want to make sure the train's not coming off the road. Okay, good. So it's at a slight angle. Probably when I painted it, I didn't do the perfect perfect thing. Okay, so these clouds are apparently in front of the train. 
wherever they are. Position, position. Let's make them 8,000. Are these supposed to be end clouds? These are clouds, oh, I'm imagining they were supposed to be at the end because they're sort of bluish. So let's do this. Before we move them, let's put this thing on. And put them at 8,000. Great. So they're at 75% of their scale. That's weird. Hmm. Okay. Is my camera moving back or something? I have to just double check something. Something seems a little weird here. Let's make sure I only have two points. Why is that feel like it's moving? That could be something to do with the code. Maybe that camera linking thing isn't the best thing in the world. Yeah, it's like dynamically changing scale as the camera moves. Okay, um, let's double check if this one's doing it too. It is, that's what the problem is. Okay, I'm not using that thing anymore. Scale, 536. That thing, that's not helping. I, maybe it's not for moving cameras. Good to know. Onk. Not doing that. That's probably why my track seemed crooked or something. My train was scaling all weird. Or maybe it's not. But anyways, I'm not using that thing anymore. You're right, Throws. Yeah, the train won't seem like it's like bullet training. I'm going to make the train probably double as big. Actually, let's do that right now. It's a good idea. Let's double it up. So, because the train's a bit more of a feature. I used to be trying to hide it because, whoops, can't do that. I'll move its anchor point. There we go. I was really trying to hide it because I wasn't going to do a really nice full out train. And then we ended up doing another shot where I needed to add a train. So, let's go here. Um. Oh, I'm just getting a little message from. Eric is working on some of our boards for um, the motion graphics stuff. Five minutes. Okay, sorry for the interruption, guys. Always stuff going on here. Okay, let's get these clouds in. So they're at 8,000. I'm going to scale them up. Now these I can I can play with a bit because I want to. These are going to be to help create ambience and more depth. The train is sort of going to disappear into the haze of the clouds. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. I might make these pretty big. And because they're sort of fuzzy paintings anyway, um, I can scale them up quite a bit, and we won't really notice. And I'll probably I might even duplicate them and add more of them and sort of push them around and stuff like that. But I'm going to save that for after. So the first step is really just to lay everything in. And then the next step will be to sort of sweeten the deal, make it look nicer. I won't get caught up in details just yet. These are your broad strokes right now. Ground. We have our first ground piece. And this is the stuff I'm, I'm nervous about, frankly, is, is these ground pieces. Because I'm... I didn't make a lot of them, and they also transition from cold world, like warm world to cold world. And I don't usually, that's another thing that makes working in this, this format tricky, is I don't usually work in a way where the layers have to transition in lighting like this. I would create a whole bunch of separate pieces um, and then sort of build them together because you can get a lot of res like you know th these layers move so fast because they're so close to the camera and then they have to be so big that they can get really fuzzy and so it'll be a man it'll be a matter of oh we don't want to do full resolution it'll be a matter of just managing how they're moving one thing I can do to increase the durability of them is rotate them at an angle like this. So ground, these are more meant to be ground planes and then scale them up. Oh, on the Y axis. And that will give us a little bit more, it'll work better. It'll feel a little bit less like a flat panel. The only thing that is difficult, that can be a problem when you do this, I'm just checking to see where the intersection point is. 
is if if you're gonna do a bunch of fog layers and stuff like that, which I usually do, is these things can when you rotate a panel at an angle like this, it can you're gonna see if the if you make fog, it'll intersect with it. So if there's like a, a cloud, for instance, and maybe this is obvious and totally redundant, but I'm just going to go through it anyways because I always run into this. So if I put this layer, you know, here for instance, it might be hard to see, but you'll get these hard lines. See that line right there? I don't know if you can see it or not. It might be hard to see. But there's this hard line because it's intersecting with that plane. Um, and that can be a bit of a problem. So I have to be careful when and where I sort of use this technique of angling things down. And the other thing you can do is let's just go here. Let me just double click this ground piece. And I'm going to go right here. And I'm just going to scale it. I'm moving the anchor point so I can scale it from the bottom. So, so I can use it to fill up the frame properly. Then the other thing sometimes I do, not always, it depends on the piece, is I will use the distort and I will use the corner pin tool. And then I can pull this over here, and go back over here and pull this one over here. And that sort of squares off any skewing that might be happening. So it's, a, it's sort of a, a little bit of a photo mapping technique, but it will eliminate that really skewed look that can happen um, if, if that's not what you want. Which you, you get away with it more when you're doing environmental stuff and versus, versus doing, if you're doing cityscapes or something like that, it's a little bit harder to, to get away with. But for here, we can get away with it just fine because it's a ground plane environment. All right, so it's at 9,000. That's too close. We need to go seven, one, two, three, which means we'll scale it down. It might be, it might have to be closer than that though track base. So these clouds have to be more like 10,000. Then this can be 9,000. Because I don't want to have a massive gap in between the track and this layer. So let's just take a quick look at what we're building. Okay, there's a snip. Mm -hmm. Pull back. So you can see you can see how we're what we're building here. I'll zoom in a bit. Sorry, I always tend to make my screen so small. Kind of looks cool. It's like a little diorama. Um, one of the things I noticed, which is kind of neat, and I really hope to, we're working on a little plugin right now that'll help. It's sort of similar. It's similar to this tool here that links the the scale and of an object to different things, like to to the camera. What I can do, what what I want to do is I want to have it so that scale and position is locked so you can push things way back and and manipulate their position without them just in the building mode and then then disable it and everything will be where it needs to be so we're kind of working on something that'll help us do that so it's a, this process is a little faster but i think it's looking pretty cool i might bring that let's bring this ground plane up a little bit mm -hmm. I really like building environments. It's one of my favorite things. Once you get a painting in and then you start like, you know, doing all the lighting and the you know, the god rays and the particles and all that kind of stuff. It's really fun. Okay. Cool. It's starting to already look pretty awesome. I think once we get some more layers and colors in there, it'll look even better. But it still looks pretty cool. I might take these mountains and just give them a slight angle over. Which one is this? This one. I might just orientate it just a little bit like this. Just so we get a little bit more of a... It might not look good. It might look okay. We'll see. 345. It's pretty subtle. Might help. Might not. Uh um and so one of the other things oh that's coming to the edge too soon we're not we're probably not going to go that far over anyway um once we get into the detailing stage one thing i usually do is i'll duplicate let's say i duplicate these mountains and then i'll sort of you know i'll clip them and do other other things to them but then sort of reposition them and recolor them I'll just a touch to get some more depth and push them back you know so get them back behind these clouds so eventually we would have even more layers of cloud uh, mountains and stuff like that. Uh, as for the blending mode um, throws to make the intersection, yeah, you can do that for sure. It doesn't always work though. Sometimes you get like artifacting and blinking, 
So it's really, it is hard in After Effects to have intersecting layers. It doesn't always play nicely. So yes, you can you can modify the blend mode. The other thing I've done in the past is to actually create a mask and just feather it so that it's it's feathered off before it hits the other layer. Okay. So I'm just gonna render this really quick so we can have a look at it. And I'm just gonna turn my myself off for a second here. Okay, you know what? I think we're getting sound from the animatic above, so it sounds super crazy. I don't know if you guys are hearing that. I'm going to just make sure to buy sound. We don't need that. So just taking a general look and trying to see, make sure the feel, I think it's moving pretty good actually. And I just want to make sure that it feels okay. It's a little bit flat and panel-y looking, which will, you know, we'll work on. Um, but after all, it is animation too, so I don't want to be too, I don't want to add, you know, it's not 3D. So this is okay for now. Great. So let's keep moving along. I'm just going to purge the memory really quick. So yeah, we're already at 36.5 gigabytes in, in my cache, which that accumulates pretty quickly. And the next thing you know, everything's running really groggy and slow. So just get this next couple layers in here. Camera, clouds, ground. Media. So I'm going to have to stop the stream in half an hour, um, but I will be back later this evening to continue working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a ground fog. That one's at 8,000. I'll just run this all the way across. In many ways, this is probably, this is a pretty basic background because I'm pretty locked down with composition. I'm not going to rebuilding it. It's, it's almost built as a painting already. So I don't have to assemble it. Usually I have quite a bit of assembly to do. Because I usually just build scenes as these giant puzzle pieces. It's like a whole bunch of little pieces. And then I try to figure out how to make them all fit together to make something look nice which is fun, but it's also incredibly time consuming. And it adds a whole other level of work to a background. But as I went through this process of, of making this project, I got a little bit better at painting. So I was less, I was less um, trapped with having to make things look better strictly in After Effects. I could use a little bit more of just my painted layers. One day, one day I'll work with a real painter. Well, I hope one day we can get somebody who's internal at the studio who can paint way better than me and teach me some stuff on how to paint well. Cool. Starting to get some good variety here. Thanks for hanging out, Thoreau. Um Thanks a lot for coming. I'm sorry to hear about your connection. Um, thanks for hanging out. Um, I, I will make sure this is posted up. And eventually, actually, what our plan is, is we're going to be doing edited versions of stuff for YouTube. Um, instead of just sending them straight over to YouTube, we'll do like little edited versions. So yeah, anyways, thanks, man. Uh, we'll, we'll see you again. OK, so here. I'm letting the train just, I'm going to let it disappear behind these trees so that we can just cut to the next scene. Um, also, what's happening here is we're seeing that intersection of the ground, the haze and the ground, or this one right here. So I can either pull it forward a bit just to hide it, 
I may even want to reduce it a bit because it's kind of, I just wanted to like help work that blend between the two layers so that it's not so harsh. And I'm, I'll, I'll definitely like, I have a haze right here as well. And this one will help to fix that as well. So we'll put it that at five, one, two, three, five thousand. Scale, scale, scale. There it is. So in part of one of the, the rules of painting is to have hard and soft edges. And when you're doing these like really layered paintings for, for animation, for layered animation, it can be really hard to get your soft edges because unless you're using a lot of like blurring and stuff like that on the edges, but the, I find the thing that can really happen is on one background, I did a whole bunch of blurring and softening of edges. But what actually ended up happening was not what I wanted because I could see the blurriness. The blurriness was a bit distracting because it, because it, because it moved as a, as a part of the layer, it was really distracting. So using haze and, and fog and stuff is, is a way to sort of soften up the edges on certain things and without having to make everything fuzzy. Although it's not quite working yet, these backgrounds tend to look pretty bad for quite a while before it's like the last 10% really, really brings them together. Haze, I might bring this opacity down a bit. Just to try to smooth that value right there. That's where it's the worst. I don't want to spend too much time refining until we've kind of put the whole scene in. So, so this is the next layer. Haze, 5,000. So 6,000, 5,000. We'll do 4,000. So as I get closer to the camera, I tend to, I, the, the distance between layers gets smaller and smaller. Okay. We might be getting too close to the camera at this point. I might have to start pushing these guys even a little bit closer. So we have this ground is 9,000, this ground, this is 7,000. 600, this can be 6,500, maybe. This one can be 6,200. This one, I want to try to get this one up to 5,000, push it in further. Um, we're really, we're starting to get close to the camera and we're still not, we still don't even have our foreground objects yet. So I might end up having to push this whole scene in a little bit. Which will be kind of annoying because that means I'll have to rescale stuff, which is fine, but it can be a little bit. <laughs> I don't want this big mountain to kind of come in until I'm ready. So right now it's already blocking stuff out. I feel like it's probably because it's too high. Go to here. Maybe I'll rotate this just a touch, but that's too much. It has to be like negative 0.5, negative 0.5 will probably do it. And I might start bringing some of these layers up because I've given quite a bit of space in between them. So as we start crushing them together, the depth will look better and better. So I might bring this guy up just a touch right there. And then, um, actually, I won't bring it up quite that much. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to actually rotate it along here by point, just a, just a touch, like by 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Because it gets high at the end over here, and I think I can hold off how, how high it gets just a bit. So that's there. This one's here. I have a tendency to work, as you've probably noticed, maybe it's annoying for you, is I've worked pretty far back. Like the composition's like this big, just this tiny little thing. I don't tend to work super close up when I'm doing this stuff initially. Um, just It just helps me not get to lost in the details and to sort of focus on the general thumbnail of the image versus seeing everything too close up. Okay, so it's 5,000. Let's put this at 4,500. Scale up. At this point, things are pretty systematic. So 
I'm just, I'm really just, I, I'm kind of just scaling everything and doing my numbers and my positioning really crudely based on, they just go up. The further, the further, the further we get away, um, ugh, I got, sorry, I got a little distracted there. So the, so we have 4,500, we have 5,000, 4,500. The next one I'm going to put at like 4,200. I just sort of do this, this, di this dim diminishing distance between the two, just naturally kind of reducing the numbers. I'm not really doing it artistically. I'm more doing it just like, I know they need to be a bit closer together. I'm starting to get closer to the camera. And what I will do after that is start adjusting this, the distance between things if they're not feeling like I'm getting enough of a parallax um, or it's not, it's not sitting really nicely. So we'll play with that afterwards. Okay, this one's at 4,500. Let's put this one at 4,000. We're starting to get into some of the closer pieces. So my hope is that they hold up. I'm very nervous about that. I also have to be careful not to block the whole frame out and block the train out too much. It's gonna look cool. I think it's gonna look really cool. I'm pretty, I'm super excited about this shot actually. It's gonna look really rad. I think I need to push these down a bit. I lose so much of, it's, it's also a tricky thing because I guess when you don't know when you're painting how much is going to be seen. So there's, I do like, you know, if you look at this thing, I'm going to lose more than half of my painting that I did. Like I loosened up as I went down, but I'm really, you're going to see tiny little bits and pieces. A lot of that painting will never be seen and is lost behind, will be lost behind other objects and sort of covered up. And so there's definitely, it's, it's, it's hard to it's hard to paint for these kind of things a little bit too because everything does get shifted around so much and you don't see a lot of what you painted which is okay so you do a lot of work for stuff that at least I do that you ne you never just never know you don't know is is it actually going to even end up in the shot sometimes like when I'm painting trees and stuff, I'll paint a whole bunch of trees and I won't even end up using some of them, which is probably just bad planning on my part, but I'll just make them so that I have them to work with in case, you know, just in case that, in case I need them. So right now I'm just working on trying to make sure that those trees don't block my train out too often. So in the end of the shot, we want sort of it to be over. We want it to be overtaken for the last few seconds with these foreground elements to suggest what's coming. But I also don't. I don't want the train to be disappeared too often. Okay, so let's put this at three thousand five hundred. No. I guess it should be pretty clear at this point why why I put a camera move in first before building it's pretty important if you don't it's there's no way to tell how how you need to build something unless it's like i guess if you're just sort of in trucking in or something where the camera's just rolling into the frame maybe you don't have to but even then things shift so much as the camera moves it's pretty important to have the camera move set up pretty early like I, I don't even start, I usually don't even start a project without having the camera set up and having a basic idea of what the camera move has to be. This haze I'm going to use over and over a lot because it's a pretty nondescript colored, sh color shifting haze that I'll be able to really use to fill up the environment. Depending though, we could the, the risk of lots of haze is that you can start to lose clarity and it can just look like a big old fuzzy mess. You lose contrast. So if the paintings were stronger, I could depend more on the paintings to, to give me my depth, but... Mm -hmm. 
3,000. So now we're about 6,000 away from the camera's home layer, like uh, its Z depth. These layers we're doing here, you gotta be careful with these. These are gonna block out a lot of stuff. I wanna make sure that we're losing a lot. Fill this up. I mean, when I design these layers, I mean, I just don't know, you just, there's no way of knowing how it's gonna look once you get from one end to the other. There's absolutely no way for you to tell um, by the time the whole scene has shifted, what's gonna be where, you know, like I have no idea where this big hill's gonna end up. There's no way for me to know. It's not, it's gonna be sort of at the end of the shot, but but it's not gonna be exactly where I where I want it necessarily. So that's sort of one of the things to consider. That's why you have to, that's why you have to, that's why I always plan to rebuild it as part of the process. And also, I might actually scale this one down because it's so big and it's so green over here. I don't want that much green here. I want it to feel quite cold here. So I'm going to, I think I might have been smart and thought ahead when I painted this painting, knowing that I think I was smart for a change and planned that this painting would end sooner because that green is not wanted over here. In fact, this one here is probably a little bit too big too because we should be in the land of cold by about here. I'm just going to scale this stuff down a little bit. Hopefully, I might have to add some more little snowy foreground layers. I'm not sure. My, my smart plan, plan planning might have ended there. I can probably space these a little further out then. Okay, so we're going to have to work on that transition. And I feel like these layers might need to be further apart. Let's put this at like 4,400. And put this one at 2,500. Looks good here. Falls apart at the edges. There's a slight angle and bring that last hill down a little bit. I have some other layers which I was hoping to end up hoping to use from the other composition. Now this one is getting quite cool here. That's it there. So it's this one's probably a bit too small now. I can probably scale that one up. I can use a little more of that. Move it over a touch. cool it's looking all right it's a bit of a it's an all right transition i mean th that green should be cooler but i can either fix that we'll see the atmosphere should be able to help that too so we'll see we'll see all to be fixed um 2200 okay i'll scale this up More, 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 more. There it is. This should go all the way across, hopefully. Just about a little bit bigger. There we go. And bring it over. Okay. So this haze is probably a little too much, but we'll work on it. We'll adjust it all later. Okay, we're almost, I think we're close to having our last few layers. Okay, so this is an icy cold layer, it looks like. Cool, so it just has a bit of green and then it has some icy cold. Great, that's what I'm, I forgot about this layer, which is cool. So we'll put this at 1,000, two, three. We're starting to get really close to the camera. So I'm kind of okay with this feeling my hope is for it to sort of feel like a little train set model. So I might push the aperture a little bit so it feels a bit small scale. 
I mean, my lens is pretty wide, so it's not going to lend itself really well to super small scale, but um, if I push the aperture hard enough, oh, this is going to look really cool, I think. If I put the, push the aperture a bit, I'll get some more blur on it. Just like completely stomping over these mountains I made. I might... So now that I'm starting to get my foreground pieces in, I'm starting to see how they're behaving, I'll have to start shifting some of these guys. Mm, and we're gonna, we have to treat, this is a, again, another difficult thing to, to manage when you're doing these kind of backgrounds is I, w you know, we've lost the train now. We never could have told that was going to happen. Might have to angle the train up. And we've also, we've got these like really big ravine gaps and stuff, which could be good, right? could be good to create a nice sense of openness and then have like the claustrophobia of all this stuff happening. But there's a rhythm to that and we have to manage that rhythm and make it feel good. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of that abstract level of composition that happens over time, which can be really tricky. It's tricky to think about. Oh yeah, now this one, is this probably, this is blowing snow. This one we don't need, that's gone. This one is tied to this ground, I believe. Yeah, okay, so it's just sort of, this is meant to be just to add some extra depth to this layer. So that's 500, this one's at zero. I might put this at 300 and put this one at zero. So this is my super foreground little mountain layer. Mm -hmm. Where are you? There he is, or she. Maybe it's a it's a girl mountain layer, or maybe it's a they mountain layer. Nondescript. Okay, now I have to watch these these tree layers to make sure I don't see the holes behind them. So I didn't really paint much to them. I don't want to like see all my little gaps and stuff. They're really just to create some depth in this like little foreground piece that kind of comes popping in. Mountains. I'm going to color these guys so they're the same. Oops. So they're the same, so I know that they're glued together visually really quickly. Just to make sure. And I want them, this is sort of cooling the scene off. So this green one here, definitely too green for where, for where we're at, I think, for the feeling of this scene. So I'm probably gonna move these guy this one over a bit, scale them down a bit maybe. Because this one. Cause I think we can open that area up a little bit and it'll be okay. Scale this guy down. Go back to the start. We should have a fucking thing. Bring him over. We're starting to get into the the world of experimenting and playing with the pieces, which is really fun. I, I like this phase. We can start messing around. This one's cool-ish. It's still, this is still possibly too warm at this point. It's pretty warm. I think I might want to even move it further back. Mm, it's really, it's really warm. Um, it might actually, I could do a color push on it too. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. I'm going to for now. Let's move it. It could probably afford to be scaled down a bit more. We can't scale it too, too much because then it'll start looking proportionately wrong with the rest of the scene with where its depth is. But. And this guy down here, this one here. Okay, so this is sort of like a snowy ground, and so that one I have to I have to honor this layer here because it goes all the way across. Now this one can be modified and moved around like we, we've been doing been doing. Let's go back to the start and make sure it's out of the, out of the frame a little bit. 
This one can also start later at any point because it's a bit modular. This one's more what, what I usually make is sort of, let's just have a look, kind of like this modular piece that ends on either side. So I tend to make them look like little islands and then they can be moved around. It's a little trickier because there's so much lighting on this and that's where the paintings kind of fall apart a little bit is when you end up putting a lot of lighting on them, you run the risk of not being able to fit them like what's happening into the environment because they don't, their color isn't quite right. Like this needs to cool off more. So one option is to create like a color gradient on there to sort of cool this off a lot, which we can do. For sure. It's not really that hard to do. It's just a matter of just something that has to be done. I find the contrast really high on this one too, probably because it's meant to be starting more around over here. So let's just, we'll just try different positions for it. I think we have enough depth that we can start experimenting with. Or let's just move it way over here. See how it feels to end with this guy. So we get this cool open spot. Now that green is a problem. But I like kind of this cool open spot. If this looks okay, we might have to put tons of like haze down there to give some depth to it so it doesn't just look like a big flat thing. Um, what do we have here? We have a bit of snow creeping in. That's okay. That's pretty cool. Some of this we'll be able to clean up with the haze. and The, the haze can also influence the color of the land. Oh hey Kira, is it Kira? Welcome to this, welcome to the stream. Um, you're one of many, many active viewers at this instant. There's thousands of us here. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to ask away. I'm just building this background right now. Okay, so this piece, the only thing I'm worried about this piece is this like this green guy right here that's super green. Um, I may want to cool that off a lot more. Because I think it was meant to be I think it was meant to like I, I thought I thought it would be bigger, but it's it's kind of turning green too fast. Unless I make this layer quite a bit larger, which I could do. And it will but I'm not sure. I think, mm -hmm, I'm not sure. So I could do two things with this is I could cool it off in After Effects or I could just go into Photoshop and um, cool it off there because this green is a little bit of an island in the middle of a snowstorm. I think it might be better if it's a nice cool thing. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Kira. I think it's going to be really nice when it's done. It, it still looks a bit a little bit crap at the moment. It's a bit of a mess. We're working on it. We're hard at work here. <laughs> It'll come together. It's going to come together. The other option is I could hide this green by rotating it away or masking it off. So like if it if the background dips like it, it does here, it dips away a little bit, I could mask it off and then not have to paint anything new. My only concern is that I'm starting to, I'm, I'm really losing the number of, foreground objects to create depth here, but maybe sometimes I always have, I sometimes have too much in the scene. So one thing I could do is just sort of kill this off a little bit before, maybe we'll, we'll try that for now. Just for now, we'll try masking this off. Just sort of tapering this down in a way like that. Just before we start going in and repainting stuff and, you know, I'm going to pretend that somebody gave me this artwork and I don't have I don't have the ability to fix it. Um Kira, I'm going to stop I have to stop streaming soon because I have to I have to go pick up my son, but I'm going to come back on this evening to continue building this scene once he goes to bed. So um We'll we'll be I'll be I'll be back. I'm so, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I can't uh, stay longer. Wrap this up. So now that I've eliminated so many layers in this, there's a sort of this gap area where we get this open space, which I think is kind of it's cool. It's actually shaping up to be pretty neat. I'm going to push this layer further in. I feel like it's too close, anyways. So what I can do is I'll push it until we hit this 
that land that there, punk, where it hits the ground. And I'll pull it off that about halfway. And then I'm going to scale them up. So now I'm starting to separate the scene into sort of two sections, which is my cool section, my warmer section. And then as we're starting to get into the cools and the snow and everything coming in like that. So, so now I'm, sort of, I'm going to start splitting it up. And the other cool thing is because I cut this, this thing in half, I can reuse those trees somewhere else. So if I just duplicate this, go mask, and I make this a subtract instead of a add. And so I have a new ground. And it's just this piece. I can pop that in somewhere in here in the transition. If I if I want, I mean, I I might actually just just me just move the anchor point here. It's really a, quite a small little island of trees. It's possibly not that useful. Um, it might even be better to mask it off like this. We'll just cut into this hill like that. Actually, I'm going to delete this mask. Bonk. Okay, let's delete the mask and make a new one because we're going to have a whole new piece we can play with which is kind of fun. Mm, hopefully this isn't too noticeable. It's a bit hacky, but I'll just feather it off a little bit. Hopefully it won't be too ugly. Just adjust that a bit. And we'll tuck it, tuck it enough behind something that it won't be too obvious what we've done. You can always use the little feather tool, this little guy here, to adjust some of these. I don't use this thing a ton. Sometimes I use it, but I'm not going to start using it because it kind of get messy for now. Um, okay, so let's grab this little guy here. I'm gonna I can tuck this somewhere else in behind some of these guys. Maybe it'll help make this transition a little bit less extreme. I'll tip it down. It might be nice because it'll feel like there's some sunlight pushing, like coming in between that little crack there, the, those two darks. Um, just sort of hinting at what's to come. So I'll also stack a bunch of clouds in there to hide that piece a little bit better. So it looks really kind of horrible right now, but it will look better, I promise. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to just push it in a little bit, see where we're at. This one, this one, this one, and then this, and then we have all the way here. So I might put this one here for now. It may also not be working in our favor because let me just like play with this a bit. I kind of like that weird coldness. I don't know if the little light dash is necessary. It would just be distracting. It might kind of kill the cool design there or the accidental design that happened. Might be better just to put them here, just add some depth in this area or use it to hide this little snow chunk that's kind of unwarranted. not sure. This comes into that area of sort of redrawing the scene. I like to maybe keep those bright greens together. That feels better. That kind of feels cool. Don't mind that little snowy chunk down there. We'll see. Cool. So I'm going to have to stop pretty quick here. I'm just going to just fix a couple little things before I go. Bring this one a little closer. Oh, those are my trees, actually. I can't move those separately. That's a bad idea. So there's this rocky hill thing, which can we can bring in sooner or later because it sort of completes itself nicely. And we maybe bring it in on this part here a little bit earlier, depending how this break is feeling. Like if it feels good, then I'll bring it in later. But I can bring these down a little bit. Maybe let's just tip this thing. I want to get some of the trees in there. Okay, and then let's just I'm gonna push these guys a little bit further forward. Cool. And I think because they're pine trees and they repeat all the time, anyways, I may put another set of them. Let's unparent them. So I'm just duplicating the ones I had, and I might just like throw them in here somewhere else, just to like fill up that gap and make it look like make it feel like a bit like a valley or something. Let's 
So let's see, right here, bring them over. Where are they? They're here. I just have to manipulate them a little bit so they don't look like a total knockoff of the ones that we see later. I might scale them down in general together. Let's see. It might not work. It might not work. It'll probably look okay once I get the fog and stuff in there. Or maybe it won't. Do we really want to keep that space open and clean? Yeah. I think it looks kind of ugly. <laughs> we want to just keep that space nice and open. I have a tendency to overfill things initially, and then I have to like go back and cut things out. So I'm probably a better idea just not to overfill. Avoid the inclination to overfill. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So... I'm not a huge fan of how those three look together. It kind of looks horrible, but mm, whoops. But it is the last few frames, and we're going to be at that point transitioning. So I, I think the main thing is to have it look good up to here. Doesn't look the best, but that's okay for now. It's just. I'll probably have to do a little render of it and get a sense of like how it's overall looking. I'm not sure. I don't want to trash that. So yeah, that doesn't look good. That green part doesn't look good. I could always just cut that piece mm. or just keep it back where it was. Endless process. I also have to be careful not to get attached to something just because I painted it and I think it looks kind of neat. A lot of deleting happens in this process. Okay, cool. I think that's almost all the pieces. We have these end clouds here, which is sort of the last ones. This ground is at zero. This These guys have to come forward then. And these are just sort of clouds meant to obscure the world that we're entering. I'll probably use them a few times, a few copies of them. And I'll have to make them so they don't look so shit. They don't look very good right now at the moment. But they will once they're placed in there nicely. And they probably don't need to be so close. Probably more meant for back here. Scale them up. And I'll be able to like push them in. I think I'll use like a few copies of them. And then they'll look pretty sweet. Look like stormy clouds coming in. Don't look what they're at. I'm excited. So I scale them up big and then like, you know, duplicate them and then put some closer. The only trick is to make sure they don't look repetitive. That can happen really quickly. Just do that with some rotation and then reducing the opacity 50. So, the less opaque it is, the less, and the you know, the more little layers you use, the less likely it is to look really repetitive. There we go. Let's see. Cool. That'll look pretty sweet, I think. <sighs> look awesome. Okay. I'm just gonna do a quick little RAM preview and then I gotta go for a bit. And I think looking at this right now, I need to add a couple little foreground pieces in here. It's pretty stark in the foreground. I might need some like closer optics or something. That could just be a lighting thing. Or I might grab some silhouettes of trees and just put them close like we're passing by them. So that's the stuff we'll add later. And there's a couple like ugly areas like that line right there is pretty ugly, I hate it. So we'll have to like fog that away or mush it up. Something I can probably do is I can go back into the Photoshop file and just blur up that edge a little bit. Um, but I'm not going to do that until we've sort of looked at the, the whole scene and gotten a sense of how the movement's working and what really sticks out as being ugly, you know, and we, you know, where we need some hard and soft edges. Like this green here. I'm already in this foreground is really acidically green. It's like kind of a cool lime green sitting on top of this like reddish color. 
So I might want to push that green down a little bit. I'm not sure. It's a bit of the palette's a bit of a mess right now because everything was designed to flow from from right to left in the color scheme. So we'll have to we'll have to manage that, and that's going to be a bit tricky to try to make that work. And I, I mean, you can do a lot in color correction, but the values have to be right. And right now the values are a little bit all over the map. But generally, I mean, there's some like general spaces. We'll see, we'll see. Like I definitely, this area right now is really high key. Um, the fog is, is probably pushing everything. So the contrast levels are really low. So that'll be my one of my goals is to to get a little more contrast in the scene, get some foreground objects in there. So I'm going to take some foreground objects that I have from other scenes and throw them in, and hopefully that'll help to start fleshing the scene out a bit. I can't put too too much time into this scene, so I probably can put in another round of a, an, an hour and a half, two hours to polish it up, and hopefully that should be enough. I will also be putting on enabling motion blur for it. So when we're actually moving, things go by pretty fast. It's kind of looking cool. Like it's nice once it moves. It doesn't look as good when it's not moving, that's for sure. But once it's moving, it's not so bad. So that's, that's, that is one of the reasons I usually do a RAM preview and stuff like that. Like uh, once everything's going, you get a different feel for things. So, but I do feel, I do think I do need to work on some of the depth and some of the contrast and stuff like that to make the scene really pop. And then we'll add some lighting, additional lighting and things like that to help sculpt the scene a little bit further. So this is the first pass. I really have to leave soon, so I'm just gonna let this hopefully finish. I'd say for a first pass, though, it's working pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. It usually really comes together in the last 25%. So I'd say right now we're at like 60% finished. So the last little bit. And then, you know, there's that whole area where I can spend you know, five or six hours tweaking, adding, you know, polishing. I got to be really careful of that. I, that's where I end up losing most of my time sometimes is getting caught up in that process of really refining. I do it really bad with character stuff, like, because I will over-rig characters or, like, make them too articulate for what they're going to be in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I guess while that's previewing, I'm just going to take a look back at the animatic. My wife and I it has little houses and stuff in it, which I might I might put in. I just haven't painted them yet. It's a nice. I like the little detail of having little houses. My wife and I were but I didn't put them in because I wasn't sure. The day before, and my daughter. I wasn't sure if I would need them like i wasn't sure if i'd be able to use them or if they were necessary okay so these are the next scenes we'll be doing we got to do the train this seems like a pretty pretty elaborate scene i'm the other part i'm looking forward to is adding the little the little details of like the the little blows tufts of snow blowing and stuff like that Okay, well, I got to get going pretty quick here. So I'm going to just let this run. I'm going to just, we'll just let it play back really quickly. And then I got to bounce. But then I'll come back and work on this tonight. Overall, it's looking pretty cool. So I'll, I'll be adding some camera bounce and stuff like bump and stuff in there. I can see one area that's definitely, I'm not a huge fan of in motion is coming up right here. So this gap, this gap between these two layers needs something in, between, in my mind, it needs something in between it. 
it's a pretty big difference between those two layers and it feels really flat. So I'll probably find a piece to stick in between those two, at least one piece to stick in between there to kind of create like a, a little bit more depth. So it's just not so, so flat. Let's put this to the screen. Let's watch it one more time and then I'll, but I say, I like how, I like how the background's working. I'm pretty happy with the background and the overall, I feel like we could use a little more cloud buildup by the end or something just to get a little bit more sp going on in those mountains. I don't mind this big flat open area. I thought that would be more of a problem visually, but I think it's working pretty well. I thought it would look really flat and dead, but it actually holds up pretty good. I think it's probably because it's just so high key and there's so little contrast. Um, yeah, it's just a couple little things to work on. Add some trees. I've got a whole bunch of trees from some other scenes and stuff we can put in. But overall, I'd say it's pretty working pretty well. I think it'll look pretty nice. And I think those dark clouds starting to come in look pretty good. I'm not seeing too much repetition or anything like that. Cool. All right. Well, I am going to stop the stream for now. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um this is going to look a lot better. I'm excited. It'll look a lot, a lot better. I'm happy with how it's looking right now. Usually this is one of the ugliest stages and this is where I start panicking. I usually have a point where I'm just like, oh my God, is this thing going to work? It looks terrible. I think it's coming along okay. So, all right. Well, I look forward to being back online soon and uh, thanks for, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later.